What's up guys, Jared Beckstrand here, physical therapist, toneandtighten.com. Today we're talking about three ab exercises that are a waste of your time. They work the same muscle, the same way, and there are better things that you can be doing with your time. There are more efficient ways to work your core. I'm gonna share those with you also, coming at you right now. So the three stomach exercises that I don't necessarily care for are gonna be your sit-ups, your crunches, and your planks. Now, hold up, planks with kind of an asterisk because that's actually one of my favorite exercises. Let me explain in just a minute why that one makes my list. Now, in order to understand why those aren't necessarily my favorite, let me give you a little bit of an anatomy lesson. You've got four muscles that make up what we would call our abs or our abdominal wall. You've got one that comes right down the front. It's called your rectus abdominis. It goes from the bottom of your ribs to the top of your pelvis. It's responsible for trunk flexion, meaning it folds us forward in this way. You've got two muscles on your sides, your internal and your external obliques. Those muscles come basically from your pelvis up into kind of where your rectus attaches and from your ribs down into again where your rectus attaches. Those are, are responsible for rotation and also a side bend motion are, are the motions that are going to utilize those muscles. Finally, we've got the deepest one. It's called your transverse abdominus. It actually goes from your lower back, wraps around, and it connects right into the front. That one, we, we concentrate on that one a lot in physical therapy. That's a great one that's actually going to add stability to your lumbar spine, to your lower back. Okay. Okay, now that being said, we've got those four muscles and each one of them does a little bit different motion. Sit-ups and crunches and planks work only one of those muscles in a very specific motion. You think about it, everything is basically in just one plane of motion coming this way. We're bringing our pelvis down, or excuse me, our, our chest up and kind of towards our pelvis and then straight back down. Again, we're working just that one rectus layer without a whole lot of variation to it. Now the wonderful thing about our trunk and our core is that it's just incredibly dynamic. You think about all the motion that you're capable of, not only do we go forward, we go backwards, we can go side to side, and then we can also incorporate this rotation motion. If you're not doing some sort of strengthening that incorporates all of those planes of movement, you're kind of missing the boat on your core exercises. Stop doing so many sit-ups, stop doing so many crunches, stop just holding a static plank, Let's see how we can enhance those things. Let's see how we can make them better by adding some different planes of motion to it. We'll do that right now. So first of all, let's talk about sit-ups. Laying on your back with your knees bent, your feet can be anchored underneath something. Hands are either up behind your head or crossed over your chest, and then you're bringing your chest up towards your knees, and then you're slowly re returning back down to that starting position. Again, the focus here is on what we would call trunk flexion. It's just bringing your chest towards your knees and then returning it back down. One plane of movement, very unidirectional, unidimensional. Let's see how we can make it a little bit better. The exercise that I like to do that is going to be a bicycle crunch. Lay down on your back with your hands behind your head and your knees bent. Now what you're going to do is extend your legs out, I don't want your feet touching the ground, and you're going to bring your right elbow into your left knee and then your left elbow into your right knee and then you're going to repeat that process. Right elbow to left knee, left elbow to right knee until we do about 10 touches on each side. 10 to 20 touches on each side. What we're doing here is we're getting away from just kind of the straight up and down motion. Yeah, we're using a lot of that rectus abdominis muscle with these bicycle crunches, but we're also adding a rotary component to it as well. We're also including the lower body as opposed to anchoring our feet. Our feet are hovering above the ground, so we kick in the transverse abdominis muscle with that, kind of that deepest layer. It's a great exercise. Try that instead of your sit-ups. Next, let's talk about crunches. Crunches are probably one of my least favorite ab exercises. I think that there is a place for them, but let's be honest, it only works your upper rectus abdominis, so now we only work a very specific part of one very specific muscle with the crunches. Laying down on your back, hands are again behind your head. You're going to raise basically your upper body up off of the ground just until your shoulder blades lift up off of the ground and then return back to that starting position is what your typical ab crunch looks like. Again we're working only a very specific part of our rectus, so the upper abs, through one very small motion. Let's see how we can make it better. 
The one that I like to make it better is going to be a, I call it a lateral reverse crunch. Now a reverse crunch, you're going to perform that by sitting on the edge of a bench. This can also be done on the floor. And then lean back with your torso and extend your legs out in front of you. Now a typical reverse crunch would be just to pull your knees up into your chest while you're bringing your chest towards your knees and then back out flat again. But again, it's only one dimension. It's only one direction that we're working with that. In order to enhance that a little bit, let's add a rotational component to it. So extend your legs out in front of you. Now drop your feet over to the side. As you pull your legs up towards you, straighten out. So at the, at the peak of this contraction, when your knees are up at your chest, you're, you're in a straight line. And then as you extend back out, you're going to point your toes over the other direction. So over to the right, pull your knees up towards you. And then as you extend out, your legs are going to be over to the left. I love this exercise because it actually incorporates a lot of lateral flexion. So we work the obliques really hard with this. We get some rotation. So again, obliques, but then we're also activating that transverse abdominis as our knees are coming up towards our chest. And so three different planes of motion with that. We get the flexion, we get the rotation, and we get the lateral flexion with one great exercise. Finally, let's talk about planks. Now, don't get me wrong, I love planks. I recommend them to people all the time. It's an exercise we do a lot in our physical therapy clinic. The thing that I don't like about planks is that I don't think enough people challenge themselves on them. So they get down into kind of this you know, low plank position, elbows and toes, and then you can hold that for how long? I mean, if you're upwards of 60 seconds, I know people who can hold it for you know like five minutes. Really, five minutes is a long time to just hold one static contraction. There's gotta be some more things that we can do to enhance this. So so while planks make this list, keep in mind, I do love planks, but try to challenge yourself with them. Give yourself more credit than you have. If you're holding a plank for 60 seconds, and if you're doing that three times, it's probably time to take that to the next level. And it's for that reason that the planks made my list. Let's show you how to make planks a little bit harder. One way I like to do it is to decrease your base of support. I'm going to do a plank with a march. So get down into that low plank position, elbows and toes. Now what you're going to do is hold that position nice and strong, keep your stomach nice and contracted while you're alternating lifting left foot and then right foot and then left foot and then right foot. Shoot for about 10 marches and then do that three times. So again, we're compromising the base of support here. We're making it a little bit harder. Your body has to stabilize when you, when you lift that foot up just because you're eliminating one point of stability, and so your body has to work a little harder to stabilize through that motion. So planks with a march is a great option. The other thing that I love would be a two-point plank. And so to take that plank with a march even one step further, now as you lift one leg up, you're actually going to extend the opposite arm out over your head. So lift your left foot up, extend your right arm out, lift your right foot up, extend your left arm out. We're taking away one more base of support, all of a sudden your muscles have to work even harder to stabilize through that motion. So a two-point plank, try that one out instead of just your standard plank. All right, and there you have them. Three ab exercises that I don't necessarily care for. The sit-ups, the crunches, and just the regular planks. Again, what they do is they work one muscle through one very specific motion. In order to have a strong core, in order to have that nice six-pack look, that nice toned, chiseled abs, it's important that we incorporate all of these muscles and that we do it through many different motions. Think three-dimensionally, and I promise your ab game and your core strength is really gonna take off. Hey, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, leave it a thumbs up if you did. If you have any questions or comments, please leave that down below. I'll get to those just as soon as I can. And thank you for those in advance. Also, if you have any ideas, any things that you'd like to see from me here on Tone and Titan, leave those in a comment below. I'd be happy to help you out. Also, a great chance to subscribe to Tone and Titan if you haven't done so already. Um, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Tone and Titan.